And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome and uh, introduce Bom and Leahy, who are working with Justine Boussard in London and um, delivering our um, Sensing Normality stra uh, strand of work. So Amanda and Rose, over you. Thanks. Um, I think Amanda will share her screen. Yeah. Great. So Can I make it full screen? Uh, uh, and you still see? Yeah. I think it's, yeah, you still see the edge, but it's, it's good. You see it's switching. Oh, actually, it's not switching at the moment. It's been no. slides. Okay, then I will keep it in the in the edge. Mm -hmm. And also I will just... Oh God. There we go. Okay. All right, so... Hi, um, we're Baum and Leahy, I'm Rose Leahy, and this is Amanda Baum, and we're an artist duo that collaborate between the UK and Denmark. Um, and the working title for, for our project is Encompass, Navigating New Norms, and we will give an overview of our practice to begin with. Yeah, and I'll also add, it's really nice to uh, meet you all and hear about the other projects. Uh, and as you will see in our presentation, there are also lots of resonances in our work. So it'll be exciting to speak more. Um, we're really excited to be working within the Sensing Normality Brief uh, as our practice revolves around creating these multisensorial tactile spaces which inspire collective imagination. We work through a hybrid of visual art, immersive experience, interactive installation and set design. And each project emerges from a collaboration with experts across disciplines previously, such as quantum computer scientists uh, from Bristol University, biogeochemists at the Royal Netherlands Institute for Sea Research, architects on the Barford and more. And in these spaces, we present scenarios to our audiences, such as a future archaeological site inscribed with past myths about the Earth, uh, based on biomarkers found in marine microbes. A speculative domestic setting where your gut health is gardened along with your home. A live nematode powered gong bath and meditation. Nematodes are microscopic worms that move around everywhere. Uh, and uh, set design for a universe where humans are reincarnated as microbes. So within these worlds, we meet our audience and invite them into the concepts and research through performative interactions, often using the frameworks of sensorial meditative ceremonies and what we call remediation rituals. This image is from our piece Salumonials, which we're currently evolving into a digital tactile experience. Uh, in these cellular ceremonies, we use guided meditative journeys into the unseen worlds of our bodies with the aim to deepen our awareness towards and empowering the potentials of our cellular selves. And so it's through this research-led world-making and material storytelling that we aim to allow the beholder a proximity to alternative realities that melt between the feasible and the fantastical. Um, we're particularly intrigued by the sensorial aspects um, relating to taste, touch and smell and how this can be an entrance into engaging subjects in immediate and intimate ways. Um, some examples of this from previous installations are algal drinks from a performative installation called Mamalga, um, the healing Raishi mushroom tea in Sunk, and the microbial mist in our installation host. And the spirulina agar agar jellies in our scenography for microbia. And it's, it's this combination um, of sensorial interactions 
and participation and ritual that we find to be a powerful and emotional experience. Um, this is what really interests us and we enjoy being able to deliver in our work. Um, and this is something that we're going to be looking at uh, for the Human Cell Atlas. And so our research will be rooted in these art science projects and our recent year's work, which is focused on invisible cellular worlds and practices of rituals and ceremonies that enable transformation. So in our research and for the Human Cell Atlas project, we wish to continue to explore what we call microbiophilia, uh, how new sensorial experiences can reconfigure our affiliation with unseen microscopic cellular worlds. A question running through our work is, what can we learn from cells in navigating on a personal, societal and planetary scale? Encompass Navigating New Norms is our working title. Uh, Encompass is Greek for stepping into together. So this is referring to our wish of facilitating collective practices that uh, enable new alternative worlds to emerge. To give you a sense of our background research, these are some of uh, our reference reading during the project. Eden Kirksey's new book, The Newton Project, tackles issues of ensuring diversity, critical discourse and ethical discussions alongside biotechnological developments, in the case CRISPR, uh, reflections which we find crucial when working uh, in a complex field like this. Other valuable sources we draw on are Jane Bennett's Vibrant Matter, uh, Donna Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, recommended by our lovely producer, Justine, uh, and this compilation, Entangled Worlds, Religion, Science, and New Materialisms, which uh, will be very central, uh, a central kind of theme throughout this project. So, <clears throat> our initial research questions that we'll be, we'll be working with are, as the Human Cell Atlas reveals the vast unknowns of our cellular universe, how do we navigate these inner responsive landscapes? How do we ensure a sense of wonder, enchantment and respect towards the unknowns of our bodies, meanwhile generating data to quantify, calculate and predict cellular behaviour? What kind of multisensorial practices can help us nurture emotional connections and intellectual reflections alongside scientific and technological developments? And how are our understandings of life, death and matter entangled with and shaped by ritual and tradition? And which new ceremonial practices can we collectively imagine and create alongside new scientific insights? So Encompass will imagine a scenario where the 3D imaging of a mapped cellular body becomes layered with meaning from memories, emotions and associations of those that experience it. The workshops, which we'll talk a bit about later, um, will be with working groups and that will inform and shape these interweaving layers. Uh, so we are particularly drawn to, but not determined on starting our HCA journey in the intricate landscapes of our guts uh, to discover a world of complex cellular interactions, including research into how intestinal cells navigate, become normal or abnormal as a starting point from which to consider navigation in a wider context. Um, but we are, uh, in general, across the different cells in the human body, uh, and questions of tissue research interested in acts of internal and external navigation, and specifically how new forms of uh, these science-based rituals and ceremonies can diversify uh, our perception of our bodies, their material networks and transformative potentials. Uh, as an example, we're keen to discuss with you, for example, which factors influence a cell's individual gene expression and how these might be altered through our behavior. So our working group plans at the moment um, will be to collaborate and create, sorry, create these collaborative workshops uh, based around the ideas of ritual and ceremony. Um, 
so the themes we're looking at are how emotional engagement and intent are what separate ritual and ceremony from routine, how they are ways of creating memorable and meaningful moments in the flow of our normal lives. So they become mutations that expand from the everyday. They are ways of creating these distinct and not normal uh, moments. And yet at the same time, a traditional ceremony or ritual can also be a way of regaining some normality or a sense of home, place, space in your life. And so the multifaceted nature of ritual and ceremony is a kind of starting point for these discussions about normality and how we live our lives and how we can rethink our bodies. We're going to be inviting people to share personal and collective rituals or ceremonies that they partake in and together we're going to use the methodology of ritual creation in order to address questions and issues around the human cell atlas. So specifically we would like to work with groups who actively engage in different forms of ceremonial, ritualistic, spiritual, religious or non-religious uh, practices from the atheist scientists secretly writing poems with DNA to the pantheist gardener, to the Sunday churchgoer, to the vegan yogi and the second life gamer, it's trying to draw uh, commonalities amongst all these rituals across belief systems. One workshop idea is to reimagine and co-create collective ceremonies formulating uh, these new forms of sacred experiences. We're interested in hearing from different people about the functions of their rituals and reflect these in the science of the human cell atlas. What does ceremony mean on a cellular level, if anything? Uh, and how can experiences from rituals across belief systems help us navigate and emotionally connect to the human cell atlas? Through this, we aim to build tools to navigate uh, the cellular universe across both digital and analog media, combining data from the human cell atlas with personal responses and reflections. Uh, this is from a previous workshop we've done, uh, which is an example of how we like to engage participants very hands-on in these complex uh, scientific themes. This we call it invisible worlds. And it's in a way a response to the increased fear of the microscopic that we currently see due to the virus. Um, we want to uh, we engage children and young people and their parents in the diversity of our cellular invisible worlds, both human and microbial. Uh, and this is an ongoing research interest of ours um, and something that we're also interested in in relation to the human cell atlas, how uh, the human is a hollow biont uh, consisting of both microbial and human cells uh, and how this kind of non-human gaze might help us um, formulate new practices around the human body. Human. Those, those are some, some other examples of workshops. And so ultimately we would be translating results from these workshops into some form of final installation or multi-sensorial piece that brings together some of these words at the bottom of the slide. Um, we'd like to end with our call, call for collaboration, some questions. Um, we're interested, uh, to the researchers that are here today, we're interested in why you are interested in the arts and the public engagement side of, uh, of this program. And we'd be interested to hear what's interesting or insightful for you taking part in this. Um, we're interested in if you have any everyday rituals or personal practices that help you to emotionally navigate your job or role at the Human Cell Atlas. Um, we're interested in cells and what we can learn from them and if there's anything that you've learned from them in, in how to navigate your own life. Um, and we're also very interested in the data and how we can work with this directly um, and if there are ways that you can imagine that we can do that uh, as well as how you imagine the data is going to be accessed and used 
um, ultimately once it's out there and by who. Um, and we're also interested in intergenerational conversations. And if you're interested in sharing any of your personal experience um, of conversations about tissue donation and research that you have with your friends or family. Um, so that are just, uh, those are just a few questions um, that we look forward to discussing with you in the breakout room. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Thank you again, bang on the money in terms of timing guys. I'm like really just, that's good stuff. Um, we've got contact details coming up on the screen there, um, but we can share those uh, in the chat as well afterwards. Um, so um, as you kind of collect yourselves and, and digest, um, do please um, put your questions in the Q&A and while you do so, we'll do a live poll um <laughs> to get people involved so charlotte what's our ne next question um we've heard about many creative practices um today so far and i wanted to throw the question out to the hca community community do you consider your work to be creative mm. okay i'm so pleased to see such a significant red yes that says a lot. And we're hovering between a no and a sometimes. How intriguing. That's really great. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions? We do. We have a question that says, really excited about the exploration on, a, on commonality between the rather diverse groups. How do you propose reaching out to these groups? Great question. That is a great question. And that's, um, that's yeah, as Susie's nodding, because that's very much where we're, where we're at at the moment. Um, we are um, working with Justine, our producer, who is, uh, and we are looking at, um, currently looking mainly at the area of Peckham, um, because it's, a place that we have in common. I live locally to it and Amanda, Amanda used to live here as well. Um, but yes, this is a, this is the question at the moment. Do you want to add anything to that Amanda about some of the people that we... And Justine too, please feel free to jump yeah. in. Um, yeah, so the strategy we were discussing actually this very morning is to put together a focus group. So we have started really closely mapping out the different organizations that could potentially be interested in working with us in Peckham. And we'll be reaching out to mostly community leaders at this stage to really have this first stage of exploring those questions together with people who can not necessarily represent their communities, but at least give us a proper sense of how they might react, what they might be interested in. So we don't start our program based on assumptions, but based on what people will give back, basically what people will tell us when we start speaking to them. So we, yeah, we've started putting together this list for a focus group and we'll be reaching out to people in the next, next few weeks. And hopefully we'll manage to have a really good diversity uh, of people between these religious leaders, non-religious leaders, people who um, you know, use gardening to, uh, to explore health and well-being, um, but also some of the people who really use food as a way of gathering people in the local area. So we've got a really broad understanding of, um, of who we want to reach and we're very, very open. And, and then hopefully maybe we'll even contribute to creating some new connections on the ground that were not there before. That would be a real success. And Justine, is there um, an interest in uh, engaging any of the community here in that focus group? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, sorry. I was like, community here. Are we talking about city? No, of course, we're talking about the Human Cell Atlas community. Yes, we would absolutely love to have some members of the um, Human Cell Atlas uh, scientific community on the focus group. That would be a real plus. So if this is something you are excited about, please do get in touch. It'd be lovely to have you involved. Amazing. Thank you so much.